everybody, it's um, Triforce. We're here at the God's Ark, and we have a special guest at the God's Ark, Hank Chen. And I'm pronouncing your name right, properly. That's right? right, yeah. Okay, Hank Chen. And for those who do not know, Hank Chen is the new King of Kong champion. Um, he not only has the world record in Donkey Kong, um, but he's also the winner of the Kong Off, which was a tournament held in 2011 where all the great Donkey Kong champions around the world. Um, you know, staples like Billy Mitchell and Steve Weeby all came and competed and Hank won. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I appreciate you being coming. Oh yeah, it's an honor to be here actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm glad you were here. It's more of an honor for me than it is for you. But um, yeah, pretty much, how, how are you? How's everything going? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. I've been laying low for a little bit, focusing on work for a little bit, but I, I'm mm -hmm. going to get back into the same thing soon. Um, for those who don't know, what, what type of job do you have? Oh, I'm, I'm a plastic surgeon. Uh, a plastic okay. surgeon. <laughs> a world champion plastic surgeon at that. So, all right. Um, outside, like of uh, doing, you know, plastic surgery and stuff like that, what do you do outside of, you know, you work outside of games as well? Like, forget about your job and forget about playing video games. What does Hank Chen do? Oh, that's a good. One. Well, right now I don't do much besides um, work and video games because between those two things, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of time. Oh, okay. um, but uh, let's say, let's say back in. Let's say back when I was in med school, I had a little more time. I, I did, I, you know, I, I, was a, I was a runner in high school, actually. And I kind of continued a little bit in college and med school. Uh, and I actually ran the marathon. Uh, it's been, I don't know, in med school, so it's been probably over 10 years now. New York City marathon? Yeah, years, I, yeah, I ran oh, New really? Yeah, not many people know that. Oh, that's crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. people don't ask me, actually. You're probably the first one to ask me, what do I do outside of... You probably get the Working, simple yeah. questions, uh, what you do at yeah. your job, what you do at video games, but no one asks is, what does Hank Chen, the human being, does? Right. Well, that, see, I want to find out who you are as a human being. Like, I know you're a gamer, and I know what your profession is, but, right. you know, I want to know you as a, the person, because people have the stereotype that gamers are these weird creatures. Uh, <laughs> no, we're just human like everybody else. Don't worry about the glove. I just wear it because I like it. Um, <laughs> but uh, do, you, are you, do you have any other professions that you're um, seeking outside of... Uh, you know, what you do, you know, your professional with plastic surgery. Oh, do you mean, uh, am I seeking any other job? Uh, yeah, any, any other, other job, any other type of career outside of that? Well, I mean, probably not completely outside of it, but um, there is, I mean, one of the things that I would like to do is actually medical reporting. And actually a patient of mine has some connections, and uh, she was saying that she maybe will maybe it will get me a job doing medical reporting. I think that, would, that for me, that would be like an ideal job. Oh, that would be the ideal. Oh, so you would take that job over the current one that you have? Well, I wouldn't replace it. I would, it would be like a two, two part-time jobs, essentially. Oh, OK. Uh, oh, cause, so yeah, because the medical reporting wouldn't be a Monday, Monday to Friday job. You know, it'd be maybe one or two days a week. And then the other days of the week, I could do, uh, do uh, you know, be a doctor. Okay. All right. Um, my last um, question on a personal level: When was the last vacation you took, and what did you do? <laughs> Fortunately, my last vacation was this past summer, in, and I went to Las Vegas. Uh, but before that, I actually hadn't taken a vacation in about two or three years. Because when I moved back to New York, I started my own office, okay. and I was busy, you know, building things up. And then once things were kind of settled, then I was worried, you know. Anytime you start a business, you're worried you're gonna go bankrupt and whatnot. So, oh, yeah. and I couldn't leave. I couldn't leave. Um, couldn't leave my office because uh, uh, unless unless you have a business, it's hard to understand. Like, it's not so much the cost of the vacation; it's like the opportunity cost. It's the cost of being away from your office. Yeah, you know, you're you're being um, you're losing. You know, your your rent doesn't stop when you're on vacation. The bills like, does uh, not stop. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So. You know, you, you might miss a phone call. You know, each phone call, at least in plastic surgery, they see each phone call costs you about $50 to, to, to get, meaning you have to spend about $50 in advertising to get that one phone call. Wow. So for every, you know, phone call that you miss, that's $50. You know, like, if you think of it that way, you don't want to leave the office at all. Yeah, I can see. No, well, I, I know how you, because here, despite this looking like a video game house, I, I, it, it, either I'm here working, or when I'm out doing something, it's really work related to what's going on in here. So I, I completely understand where you're going um, um, with that because um, there's a, a documentary 
that I, that I have called the King of Chinatown, and yeah, it actually says like exactly it. what you just said. Yeah. So, but you have a documentary yourself, and what's the doc that documentary called? Yeah, it's called the uh, Dr. Kong. Um, it was released, I don't know, uh, not quite a year ago, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's like six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, but it, actually, it was directed by uh, um, this person named Alexis. She, I met her at Barcade actually. When um, when I started getting good at Donkey Kong, I wanted to find a real machine to okay. play on. And I met her at this bar, and she happened to be a filmmaker. And she was there the same nights that I was there. They, it turned out I went there on Wednesdays because it was um, convenient for me in terms of work. Um, and she happened to be there on Wednesdays as well, so that's how we met and became friends. And then oh. one day I actually didn't even know she was a filmmaker. And one day she just came up to me and said, "Hey, how would you like to be the subject of?" the documentary and I said sure <laughs> and and it all boy everything just came together and you got the world record on top of it it's yeah. not crazy <laughs> that, that, I love when things like that happen so you met at Barcade for those that don't know Barcade is a, an actual bar arcade here in Brooklyn New York um, a, a, a lot it's an upscale I, I think it's a very upscale a lot of good people go there and they pretty much um, they enjoy the alcohol and they're socializing yeah. with other people but you get to play old vintage classic arcade games yes. so you know that that's something I think that's the new direction for arcades if they want to survive anyway but that's a whole other topic but okay so you met her there uh, she uh, she did a documentary on you following you and so forth I want to get everyone to you know get a chance to plug in your your documentary so people know where they can buy where can they find this documentary uh actually technically it's not my documentary but i'll, I'll plug it anyway okay because <laughs> uh, alexis is my friend huh. uh you can go to www.drkongthemovie um no spaces.com and uh just click on i think there's a cl click here to buy the dvd link and just uh email it actually pops up an email just email the alexis all right, so you guys got it. www.drkongthemovie. Yeah. dot com and um, help support Hank Chen and get a, a behind the scenes, behind the scenes of how it started out. <laughs> um, you know, in the Donkey Kong universe. All right, so let's 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 change, let's turn the page and um, and go to you being a gamer. Now everyone knows you for Donkey Kong, but what I want to know is what was the first game you played? That's Ever. A uh, I probably don't. Oh, I do remember actually. Um, well, the first, well, the first arcade game that I ever played was Miss Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. um, but the first, the very first game I actually ever played was probably on the Atari Atari Twenty Six Hundred. I don't even remember which game. I was so young. I was so young when the Atari was out. Uh, but the first game I can remember playing was Miss Pac-Man. Was Miss Pac-Man the arcade? Yeah. arcade? Oh, okay, so uh, we call here at Empire Arcadia we call you an Arcadian. Those means. Gamers born from the arcades. <laughs> uh, we have a brother here. We have a brother here. <laughs> All right. So when you played Miss Pac-Man, um, what? How did that make you feel like playing the game? Like, did that spark it for you to want to start getting into other video games? I mean, the, it, it was definitely exciting. Um, you know, I I grew up in an immigrant family, so we weren't uh, we weren't very rich. Uh -huh. So you know, I couldn't go to the arcade every week and plug in quarters. You know, I could only you know. I, whenever my, we happened to be in a candy store, I would ask my dad for a quarter to play Miss Pac-Man, and you know I would only get to play maybe once a month or something. So I, I wasn't good, any good at it, you know. I, yeah, I can't get good at Miss Pac-Man by playing once a month. What's so and back, back then, you know, I was probably I don't know seven years old. Like I wasn't even tall enough to like see, to the, see that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. to see the, the screen clearly. Did you ever get um, a box or a crate so you could stand on to try to? Um, um, no, I mean, you know, back back then. Arcades were the thing, so it, all yeah. the machines were crowded, so it wasn't like you could say, oh, make room, you know, let me, yeah. Yeah. The only way you could do that is the one chance you got on, and you had to be good enough to stay on. Right. So, <laughs> so, exactly. I exactly. Really cool. All right. Um, outside of the arcade game, like console game, like what type of genre type games, like what genre games do you like? That's a good question. I, actually, before I, before I was known as the Donkey Kong, you know, mm -hmm. world champion, I actually was mainly a console player. Um, you know, after the arcades started to die, I mean, I always kind of visited arcades through the 90s and even early 2000s, but it became progressively hard to find arcades. Uh, so I gradually switched over to console, console games. Um, the genres that I liked the most were probably uh, driving games uh, and platformers. 
driving and platformers. Okay, right. I, I can I, I I feel you on the platformers. So we, we already know what type of platform is out there, but the driving this this is something different. <laughs> what type of driving games did you play? Well, I, I would play. Um, let's see, Gran Turismo. I played a, a whole Gran Turismo series up, up until Gran Turismo Three. I have Gran Turismo Four, but I, I think I, I never got into it. Um, let me see. I played uh, the one on Xbox. I forgot what it's called. Uh, I think Forza Motorsports. No, the one before Forza. Um, was, uh, there was one before Forza. Yeah, there, it, there was. It was the the big one before Forza. It was called. If you give me a minute, I probably think. Uh, no, it, it was more of a nah, realist, a the, real, real, like a real sim. Because the only the only two simulation driving games I know, obviously, is Gran Turismo. Forza Motorsports, but I know you're, you're right. It was this no, was, was on something Xbox. Forza. This is on the Xbox. It was yeah. on the Xbox before Forza yeah, and Motorsports. And it had a sequel too, but I'm blanking on the name right now. Mm, I don't know. A anyone who's watching this, what in the YouTube comment, could you like put the actual? <laughs> thing? I'm kind of lost right here. But so, I, I remember I would mm -hmm. actually that was the reason I got uh, hooked on that game was because that was one of the first driving games where you can play online and you can compete against. Uh, against other people. Oh really? And yeah, and this was this was back in early two, I think early two thousand. It had to be early two thousand. Yeah, because uh, yeah, three sixty dropped in 05, 05, 06. No, actually just 05. It was a winner of 05. Um, so it had to be in the early two thousands when the the game first. This was came the original out. Xbox. Yeah. The original Xbox. And I, I remember I would go I would go online and kick everyone's butt. And um, one day I, I I went into this room and. I, they were chatting and they're like, "Oh, you're the guy that has the the record on the leaderboard on this track." And then he's like, "Yeah, you took it from me." I was like, "Oh boy, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> I got my butt whipped." <laughs> really? they, what, was it by one guy, or did they like? In, did you have a? Well, you know? I think this was like an elite group. Oh, because you can. Um, the way it worked was you could request to be play someone at your level, someone below your level, or someone above your level, or random, you know. Mm -hmm. So, just for kicks, I was like, heck, you know, I want to see who's better, who out there is better than me. <laughs> okay, <you found> that. <laughs> like, I found out real fast. <laughs> so, go, go, moving from um, console to arcade, when was the first time you've ever played Donkey Kong? Um, the first time I played Donkey Kong, I actually, you know, in, in most interviews I actually say that I've never played Donkey Kong until I saw the documentary. It's not completely true. I actually played it once in, um, you know, I did my residency in, uh, at Vanderbilt in Nashville. And we were, um, we were at a Dave and Buster's once and I, I was with a group of friends and someone wanted to play Donkey Kong. And, you know, I played different versions of Donkey Kong, yeah. but nothing, nothing's like the arcade. And That's true. I played Donkey Kong Arcade. I was like, I don't remember this game being that hard. And this, yeah, it, it, the arcade version is, is much harder than than all yeah, the ports. It, it, same thing for Donkey Kong Junior. All of that, they, they, you have all these ports that's on like the Game Boy Advance or whatever the case may be, the NES uh, remakes. But those are all easier. Right. But when you play the arcade, like I played Donkey Kong Junior as a download for the Nintendo 3DS yeah. Yeah. Virtual Console. I make it to. Level four, easy, you know, yeah. they have it. But I went to MacFest this weekend mm -hmm. and I played Donkey Kong Jr., the arcade, and I'm like, wait a minute, where's that board with the electricity and stuff like that? You have to go through the wave twice before you even get there. <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute, why is this guy doing this? It's like, ah, oh, this is something. <laughs> so I, I cannot, I, I, I definitely agree with you right. that the arcade versions are actually harder. Right. But, but finish your story. So I did play it once before I saw the Kingdom Come. Mm -hmm. So this was early 2000s. Um, then, let's see, then when, uh, when the King of Kong came out, I actually didn't see it right away. I was flipping through some magazine, I think EGM, or some other uh, magazine, and uh, I saw a write-up of it, and they gave it really good reviews, so I was like, hey, why don't I check it out? Mm -hmm. So I checked it out. This probably wasn't until maybe, well, actually, I did see it probably in 2007 when it came out, but I didn't think anything at the time. You just thought of, it was just like a, yeah, another documentary. Exactly. Out. I mean, I thought it was cool. But in the back of my mind, I was like, hey, that seems like a pretty neat game. And in that documentary, Steve Weeby is kind of teaching you a little, you know, giving you tips and tricks. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, I wonder if I could, you know, you know. Expand I, on that. Yeah, I, I was curious, basically. Uh, so about a year later, after I moved back to New York, um, and things got, things were a little bit settled down, you know, with the move and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I fired up MAME and I started playing. And this, wasn't a, this was about a year later, so this was late 2008 now. Um, 
I started playing on MAME, and I got good really fast. Really fast. I mean, the first time I played, I couldn't even get past the first board, but I, you know, I, I kill screened in three months. Wow. Yeah. Kill screen, three months. Yeah. So then from there, obviously you said, okay, um, this is me, but you have to get an actual certified board machine. Is that when you went out and bought the actual machine? Well, actually, what I wanted to do first was I wanted to find a machine in New York mm -hmm. um, to make sure I could translate my main skills to an arcade. Um, so I you know, went online, searched through all these forums, and the only place I could find was that I actually had to private message <clears throat> somebody. You know, Ben Falls? You, yeah, you know, I know yeah. Ben Falls, yeah. Because <clears throat> I looked at the Donkey Kong leaderboard, and... Um, I clicked on all the profiles and I was looking for someone from New York or in the area and Ben Falls was the only one in the area. So I private messaged him, uh, PM'd him, and I said, hey, is there a Donkey Kong machine in New York? And he goes, oh, have you ever been to Barcade? And the rest of the sister, I went to Barcade like the next day or maybe even the same day. Yeah. And <clears throat> there it was and I, you know, I started playing out. It was, it was funny because I almost had to relearn the game because the controls, uh, yes. it's very different. Yeah, it's, there, it's the same game, I should say. It's the same game, but the controls, the controls are different. Yeah. different. The controls yeah. changes the entire dynamics of how, the, of how you are playing the game. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that main does that to you. Exactly. Uh, unless you can get a, 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 a replica joystick and then you, the inputs for it into main right. are mimicked because then that's the only way you can play. Because I, I have a joystick that's like that, so that's how I can practice Super Mario on me right. and whatnot and do what I have to do. So, so you went there. So what, what, was, what was the condition of um, the Donkey Kong at the, uh, the uh, arcade? It, it varied because since it's a bar and an arcade, you know, people spill beer on it and it yeah. takes a lot of abuse. So, they, I mean, I think considering they, they do a good job maintaining machines, but it's, you know, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's horrible. So, um, it took me, it still took me maybe two or, it took me another two or three months to kill screen arcade because I didn't have it at home, I couldn't play it every day and I only went maybe once or twice a week. So uh, I was only able to play on arcade once or twice a week and maybe two or three months later I kill screen on the arcade and then that's when I decided it's time to get my, my own machine. So, uh -huh. and actually even then I still wasn't out to set, set a world record. I, <clears throat> I was out to record a kill screen, submit it to to Twin Galaxies, Twin Galaxies and, and that was it. That was it, yeah. And then he ends up getting the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you don't plan for stuff, that's the best time when it happens. So um, I don't want to throw out our money out there, but how much does a how much does a Donkey Kong machine cost you? Um, if you if you look if you look on eBay or Craigslist mm -hmm. and you look long enough, a a good deal for a working one. I mean, not in perfect shape, but working yeah. is probably four or five hundred. Oh, okay, so that's it, not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. But it, if you buy a machine for four or five hundred, it probably needs some cosmetic, uh, cosmetic work, or maybe yeah. like the spring in the joystick replaced or something. Like the ones that are like mint, they they go for like a thousand or more. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Richie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Richie sells them for yeah. over but a thousand. You yeah, get, but you get what you pay. But you get what exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cut from Donkey Kong a little bit because um, this is. Uh, a different question. This is a different type of question. All right. You have a fiance, right? Oh no, <laughs> actually, a girlfriend. Just girlfriend. Oh, you have a, a girlfriend. I apologize. Okay, so you have a girlfriend. All right. How important was it that she had to have some type of understanding to video games for you guys' relationship as boyfriend and girlfriend? Well, it, I to me it wasn't important, but. Um, I think it had to be, I mean, she knew mm -hmm. when we met that, I, I, at that point I was just a kill, kill screener, I wasn't the world record. She knew it was part of the package. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go on. Unfortunately, she's somewhat of a gamer herself, so it wasn't a hard, you know. When you found out she was a gamer, how did you feel? Uh, I think it, it was a plus, because it makes you know, it makes uh, relating to what you do a lot, a lot easier. Okay. Because uh, people, you aren't, you aren't fighting with each other. Hey, let's, you know. Exactly. Because you can, when she's <laughs> playing, you can understand that she doesn't want to be disturbed exactly. because she's playing. And exactly. when you're playing, she exactly. understands that. Exactly. All right. Now, when, as, as her boyfriend, when you see her achieve something, or like, okay, she sets 200000 on centipede, but mm -hmm. then... The next day she sends 600,000 and she's like, yeah, how do you feel? Oh, we both have a competitive nature. <laughs> and 
for a while, what, um, this is a funny story too. Uh, when we first met, I was trying to teach her how to play Don Kong. And she actually became a pretty good Don Kong player. She, I think she stopped playing at about 200,000. Um, and then uh, we were walking around Barcade one day, and she's like, you know, I, I got to be better than you at some game, right? Because we hadn't found a video game where she was better than me yet. So I said, why don't we try Centipede, because I suck at that game, right? Okay. And she tried it, and she liked it. So, um, and she, you know, I, her first game was higher than my first game. Let's put it that way. So I was like, I can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't know that was going to happen. All right, all right. So, so now, so then, you know, we, we kept outdoing each other. Um, it was neck and neck for a while, actually for several months. Okay. And then there was one, our usual day was Wednesday. There, there was one Wednesday, I think this was a turning point in our neck to neck. Yeah. There was one Wednesday where she went to a music concert without me. Okay. And I just killed her, killed both of our top scores. And I think ever since that, ever since then, like she's never, she, she's never um, uh, topped my high score. Oh. So yeah, now now I'm way better than her. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you think that competitive nature made her a lot better than what she 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 was when she first started? Oh, de definitely. I think if um, if I think if we weren't competing against each other, we probably wouldn't have pushed each other to, that to the heights. Yeah. Okay. See, see, ladies and gentlemen. When, uh, female gamers can be just as good, if not better than the guys, if given the chance and if we actually help them compete and give them that competitive drive. So you sexist gamers out there, you need to cut that out. All right. So we're, we're still looking for a game where uh, there, we probably can find. Actually, she's really good at Counter Strike, so no, I haven't. A, uh, I haven't. I, I, I don't want to touch that because I, I know I'll get my butt whipped. Too many headshots. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sniped in the face like, oh, you want to beat me at Sunday Pure, right? <laughs> like, pull out. All right. So let's, we're going to, um, I've got like two, two more questions for you. And uh, the next question is, um, this is one, a question I personally wanted to ask you because I was at the King of Kong event uh, with you mm -hmm. when you competed against those guys. Unfortunately, I'm a scrub at Donkey Kong. I do not know how to play this game. <laughs> I was in the corner playing Super Mario Brothers and I was actually beating my world record and you guys were all playing behind the red velvet um, ropes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. When you, you had the world record at the time and you walked into that place and you had to play against guys like uh, 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 um, Eric, Steve, Billy, mm -hmm. the other Steve mm -hmm. and all these different Donkey Kong champions out there. How, how did that how did you feel? Did you go in with the, you know, I want to know, like, did you have a battle plan to beat these guys? Did you think you can be, were you confident that you could beat these guys? Or were you like, you know, I was invited to this thing, I'm just going to go out there and give it my best and see what happens? That's a good question. Well, I, it, you know, going into the competition, it was, you know, I got asked a lot before the competition who, who did I think was going to win. Um, and in a competition like that, it, there's so many factors. It's not just how good, how good of a player you are. It's also like, what kind of strategy are you uh, go, going to go in with? And also, you get nervous in front of crowds. You know, how yeah. much experience do you have playing in front of a live audience that you know that's snapping pictures and rooting? So uh, I actually, I actually thought Steve Weeby was going to win, uh, win the combat because not because necessarily I, he's a very good player, but I, there were tons of good. Donkey Kong players at the event because he 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 has the most pre most experience playing, playing live. live yeah. Yes, in a live set. He was on G4 even playing Donkey Kong. Yes. You know? And also the fact that he's very consistent. You know, he's gotten you know he can consistently get nine hundred thousand or in the low millions. You know, in, in just one or two days of play. Um, so I, I don't know I don't know anyway. I I probably could do that, but in a live setting, like I could probably do that at home, like get two million point games in a weekend. But yeah. In a live setting, I'm not, I'm not so sure I can do that. So I actually picked Steve Weeby as the winner. Um, and, you know, I mean, going in, I, I figured the high score for the weekend was going to be the low millions. 
That's, yeah. that's what I was thinking. I, I was thinking so, the same thing. And someone told me I was. I had a conversation. I don't want to name his name. And I was like, no one will hit a million points over this weekend. And it was like, what do you mean? And I was like, because this is not in your house in right. private. <laughs> so everyone's gonna everyone's gonna come here with their 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 high their B plus game. No one's gonna be able to play their A plus here. It's yeah. not gonna happen. It's a live setting. Yeah. So and I, I saw Billy every now and then. You know, looking out for everyone was doing that to each other, right. looking at each other's games. So no one could really focus the way they really wanted to. Well, that was the thing is that part of the strategy was to figure out what pace everyone else was playing at. Because uh, as you know, Donkey Kong is a kill screen. So after you hit the kill screen, you can't get any more points. So if your pace is lower than someone else's pace, even if you both reach the kill screen, that person's going to beat you. You know? Um, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I think that was part of the strategy. You, you want to play at the highest pace you think you can achieve in a single weekend. And for me, I thought that was going to be low, low millions. I actually never, no one actually, no one broke, broke no a million. One broke that, yeah, no you one were the closest one. to a million. So I, you had nine, nine, you had nine, nine eight nine, something, or nine, 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 nine four. I had my first, my first, uh, well, high, high scoring game was nine eighty one, and then my the second day I had nine nine four. Okay. Um, but that was the other problem with this comp. I mean, not necessarily a problem, but you were always aiming to just get, you know, a thousand points higher than the first place score. You weren't necessarily aiming to get yeah. a million, you know, because the million was an arbitrary exactly. barrier. Uh, you were, you know, when I went, went for nine nine four, that game could have easily gone over a million. But when I saw I was on pace to cruise to over Steve Weeby's score, I just started to stop point pressing. I just cruised through boards. Yeah, because you just wanted to, you just want to put the pressure on him. Well, I wanted to secure the top spot. Because okay. if I if I was if I was shot for a million, there's a chance I could have died. You know, taking some risks that was unnecessary. And you didn't want to take those risks. You wanted to ensure that you had the top spot. Exactly. And then put the pressure on him. Let him exactly. go for it. Exactly. Okay. Um. All right. So, um. If if they were to have a Kong off two. And they invited you. Would you defend your world record? Would you defend they're, your title? <laughs> your world record is secure unless someone gets it. But would you defend they, your your title? They're actually Richie's actually planning on having a Kong off too. Oh fact, yes. Uh, a location and tentative time have been set. <clears throat> it's going to be at the One Up Arcade in Denver. And Colorado. In Colorado, yeah. Oh okay. And um, I don't know if you know about the One Up. It's a relatively new. It's kind of a bar barcade type of thing. But in Denver. But in Denver, yeah. Okay. Um, the, the Richie, he's probably there right now. He actually flew out uh, around now to speak to the owners. They're going to arrange it. Because oh. uh, Richie, <clears throat> Richie, I think he trademarked or copyrighted the, the name Kong Kong off. off. Yeah. yeah. Which is probably a smart thing that to do. That was smart. And it, yeah. it got published in Guinness. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, Richie's set now. So what is going to happen? But, um, so yeah. he's going to, I think they're going to call it you know, Richie Knuckles, Kong off at the One Up Arcade. I think that's how they're gonna uh, uh, publicize it. But there, he flew out. He flew out. I think this week to discuss like details. You know, figure out how many players they should uh, invite and who to invite, things like that, and just the logistics. You know, um, how much they should charge, mission. You know, work out the finances as well. Oh well, if you if you, uh, well, He's having it, so I'm going to be there. So, <laughs> um, are you planning on going? Yeah, I, I actually gave Richie my word. So unless something disastrous happens, I'll be there. All right, you'll be there. The world's not going to end. I mean, the so I'll definitely be there. So outside, okay, so my last question for you, outside of um, the whole, you know, Donkey Kong thing, what's next for Hank Chen, outside of the Kong Off 2? Uh, I don't know. I, I think, I'm, I'm going to, well, once I push... Donkey Kong to what I think is my best, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm probably going to go back to console gaming. Mm -hmm. um, I still haven't, you know, I haven't played a console game in like the last two years because I still have Super Mario Galaxy on my Wii. Oh, I know it's exactly. Wrapped, yeah. I know exactly. I, I, I have Zelda in the, the room. It has not been on. <laughs> and I don't understand why, why it's, what's taking me so long and I bought right. the game first. But like, so, <laughs> I, you know what it is? I think it's like that although you're it's just the replay value of the classic games. Right. It's like, as great as these new games are, the, the replay value of the classic games is unmatched. And right. you're just in love with it, and it's like, yeah. you gotta wait. But right. Hank, thank you for coming on, um, you know, coming to the ARC. Um, pleasure to be here. A pleasure to be here. It's an honor to have you here. <laughs> thank you. you. You too, Yumi. <laughs> but um, well, I'll see you at the Kong Off too, or actually I'll see you perhaps later on in the year in a number of things. Are you going to Fun Spot? Uh, May 50-50. Maybe, maybe, yeah. 50-50.
So everyone, thank you for watching Hang Chen, and uh, we'll see you later.